the final season 2 is finally here. And with that we have the new 2.0 patch notes, and of course we have the new gadgets, equipment, specializations, and the new weapons. We also have some major changes to the medium class, we already have some confirmations for season 3, we have the new season 2 V rewards, and some further updates for the game's future. We got a ton to talk about. What's up world, it's Trippia back in the video channel, all things the fun. Okay, so let's just jump right into the patch notes, and as always we do have that opening statement. However, first if you are looking for all the new items outlined and everything what's going on with that, as well as even some hidden and secret mechanics, you can check out my last video that I'll have linked down below. However, for now, let's just jump into the actual patch notes and the opening statement. Now, this time there was no opening statement over on Discord. However, for the actual patch notes, we do have this opener, which says much has changed in and out of the arena, and you can expect a lot more as the season progresses. You may encounter some strange things this season now that CNS, a rogue hacking collective, has infiltrated the game show. While the showrunners fight for control over the finals, you'll fight it out with an array of game-changing gadgets and specializations that will require all contestants to rethink their strategies. Again, they go over that new game mode, the new FAMAS, and the new weapons like the KS-23 and the 93R. However, again, I do cover those fully in an overview and their hidden mechanics in my other video, as well as all the new equipment like the Dematerializer, the Gateway, Anti-Grav Cube, Data Reshaper, and of course we do have that Battle Pass which has 12 pages and 96 rewards. Again, if you're looking for a full overview of the Battle Pass, I do also have that on my channel. We also do have the new Career Circuit System which allows contestants to earn new rewards that isn't just tied to the Battle Pass. It also has some multi bucks in there, so it is definitely worth a check out. Now, they have done a league ranking overhaul where they say they have better matches here, and the goal is to provide a much better quality experience when playing in ranked tournaments. You'll get your starting ranked based on your first eight rounds, and from there, you'll move up and down based on your performance. Contestants can expect to land between bronze and gold at first and climb the ranks from there. They said they want a lot of people to test this system so that they can expect more tweaks and changes throughout the season. Now, again, of course, we do have those private matches. As for the actual patch notes, buffs, and changes here, I'll go over those now. Of course, we do have that new map that I was showcased on my channel as well. We have a new game show event called the Retro Invasion 82 that happens on every single map. We do have that new specialization, the Dematerializer. However, this is significant because Medium does actually lose the Recon Sense, so that has now been replaced by the Dematerializer. For the big portion here, we do have the balance changes. Throwables, explosives, and quote-unquote nukes have been actually quite significantly nerfed. They added diminishing returns on damage from nukes, throwable objects that can carry C4s, breach charges, or mines. The distance that you can throw these things has also been significantly nerfed. They added here that for each source of explosive damage, including the throwable and starting with the highest, a damage modifier is applied to each instance in sequence of 60%, 40%, 30%, 20%. So if you try to stack the explosive damage, it will be significantly reduced. Gas canisters now immediately start to steer off their direct trajectory aka wobble when they have attachments so again they're going to be significantly reduced in that actual distance also when you pick up throwable objects with explosive gadgets that are attached those said explosives will become unarmed when the player lets go of the carried object a rearming timer for the explosive starts and then the explosions from the c4 breaching charge and all mines that detonate while unprimed now deal 20 percent of their original damage so again some massive nerfs to nukes there and basically non-existent anymore they decrease the health value of propane gas tanks from 250 to 120 which also puts even more of a nerf into it they also fixed a bug with fuel barrels where they sometimes wouldn't ignite when taking damage for example from explosions or bullets and there was some dev comments here saying that nukes were a hot button issue in season one the previous tuning made nukes seed the intended ttk by quite a large margin. Since our initial changes weren't substantial enough to alter this tactic, we've added even more ways to balance the nukes going forward. Toxic Gas also did receive an additional nerf, where they added a delay to the application of damage, and damage will now start to tick by 0.5 seconds after the player enters the gas cloud. They also added a new functionality that causes damage to ramp up gradually over time from 30 HPS to 60 HPS over 2 seconds. So instead of that initial damage ticking quite high, it does take quite some time now. They increased the damage tick interval from 0.1 one to point three seconds per tick so you will have a little bit more time to get out of gas once you're in there they also had a dev comment on this where they went on to say that we've always intended for toxic gas to act as an area denial tool however because of its immediate high damage and quick dispersal it has been way too potent we've made changes to make toxic gas better to fit its original intention so i definitely agree toxic gas was way too strong moving on to the gadget section we have c4 decreased ammo count from two to one we also have its cooldown from 
45 to 30 seconds, as well as its minimum damage at the edge of the explosion from 90 to 75. As you've seen from some of the earlier footage, Defib actually did get a new functionality, where the revive player gradually rematerializes into the level over a period of 3 seconds before loading back into the arena. They also increase the charge time up from 0.6 to 0.8 seconds, and they increase the starting health in the Defib revive from 40 to 50%. A little bit of a buff there for the actual HP, however everything else was quite a big nerf. Dome Shield got a massive nerf with a decreased maximum duration from 20 seconds to 12 seconds. Jump Pad also had its cooldown increase from 25 to 30 seconds. The motion sensor got moved from light to heavy archetype. The RPG had a ton of changes like where they fixed an issue where they made the dispersion almost identical regardless of what the state the player was in. They increased the projectile dispersion in all non-aiming states, reduced the projectile dispersion when aiming down sights. The hipfire is a little less accurate while aiming down sights is even more accurate. They increased the zoom in time from 0.2 to 0.4 seconds. They increased the equipment time from 0.5 to 0.5 and the unequip time from 0.35 to 0.4. Sonar grenades got moved from the medium archetype to light. This also happened for tracking dot which had its decreased dispersion in movement states by 50% and they increased the accuracy by decreasing the dart dispersion while aiming down sights from 30 to 10%. They also added force feedback for controllers. The vanishing bomb, which I did think needed some buffs and changes, did finally get those where they increased the grace period from teammates from 0.75 to 1.25. They also increased the cloak duration on both teammates and the user from 6 to 7.5 for teammates and 5 to 6 for the actual user. And from using this, yeah, it definitely felt way too short with that. Now again, as I've said, recon senses have been removed. However, they also do have a dev statement here and we've concluded that recon senses have been detrimental to the game at large and have decided to put it out of play for now they do mention that the spec might return in the future in some form down the line but will also need a major rework mass shield got its cooldown on fully deployable shields from 12 to 15 seconds and they increased the starting health after full depletion from 200 to 250 moving on to weapons we did have some significant changes the akm got its decreased damage fall off minimum range from 35 to 30 they also did this for the max range and modifier at max range which was 40 meters to 37.5 and 67% to 55% respectively. This also happened to the F car at max range with the same percentages. Lewis gun got its updated recoil pattern to be slightly less accurate over time during the sustained firing. M11 got its increased accuracy by decreasing bullet dispersion when firing from the hip, where the M60 got the opposite treatment of the Lewis gun where it got the updated recoil pattern to be slightly more accurate over time during sustained firing. They increased the accuracy by decreasing the bullet dispersion while moving when firing from the hip and while firing while aiming down sights, where they then decreased accuracy slightly by increasing bullet dispersion while standing still when firing while aiming down sights. Now the Magnum or the R357. Now the R357 got the increased damage falloff modifier at max range from 35 to 45%. Now some people were confused by this, but this is actually a buff and not a nerf. Throwing knives got its increased projectile speed from 120 meters to 138 meters, and that is per second of course. The throwing knives should be even faster for you. And the XP45 got its decreased accuracy by increasing bullet dispersion when firing from the hip in most movement states. Now for Equipment Mastery, they did add a ton of new levels to basically everything, weapons, gadgets, and specializations. They added a pretty cool new option for gameplay here for Auto Sprint. They went on here to say for a dev comment, you could turn on Auto Sprint in the settings and select it. It takes time for your contestant to begin sprinting. The finals has a unique omnidirection sprinting system, which means characters can sprint in all directions instead of more common forward-only sprint. Now they had a ton of bug fixes here like the general animation, game modes, and even even level fixes. But there's a lot here to go over and there's really nothing too serious or too important with that but you should definitely see a more refined game overall with that it also seems like they did also improve the spawn selection around objectives and another big one here for levels as they have the new improved algorithm for map selection to ensure you rarely see the same map multiple times in a row and leaving matches will not affect the outcome of the selection there also was some art audio and ui fixes however the biggest one here or the biggest change to ui is that player cards are introduced into the finals now and these will be generated from your character customization and your chosen intro animation. Something cool to toy around with there. Now, two last minute mentionables here is that for season three, we actually did get some facial hair confirmations and even chest hair. Again, this has been a highly requested topic, so we are finally getting those. Where well, this has been confirmed, or at least essentially confirmed, by Embark Rob over on Discord, where he said facial hair is coming, we just need another slot for face customization. And someone also asked here, no chest hair then, damn. And he said it might actually be a part of the season three. So we'll see it sometime sooner than later, around June time, when the new season starts starts. Also, we do have those brand new League Season 2 rewards here. Overall, it should about covered for today's video. If you like, like, subscribe, and until the next one. Deuce!